Hi, hello everyone. My name is Miriam and today I want to talk to you about using ChatGPT for multilingual language learning. Okay, let's start. First of all, I'm not an expert in artificial intelligence or computer technology. I'm just a language teacher, a university lecturer and a parent. And in recent weeks, I heard a lot of uh, talk about ChatGBT, so I wanted to check it out. And then I played around with it a bit and I was like, okay, now I know uh, what ChatGBT is. I'm an expert. But then, uh, so, so I sent in the proposal for this talk. And then I started to research this more. Then I realized actually I don't know anything about it. I haven't even scratched the th surface. And yeah, actually, now I'm at this stage, this trust me, it's complicated because I've, I've went through, oh my God, this is so exciting uh, to, oh my God, this is so disappointing to, well, it's not too bad and it has potential. So uh, what I want to talk to you about today is, well, I will uh, introduce myself with the help of artificial intelligence. And then I want to give a short introduction. What is ChatGBT? Because some weeks ago I had no clue what it is and should be, be, be worried or excited. And then um, ChatGBT is a large language model. I will also explain what that is. And I want to yeah, explore together with you um, how we can use uh, large uh, language models for language learning. And these are some examples, like um, how to how you can you create an Anki deck? How can you ask for recommendations? Um, I mainly focus on ChatGPT, but um, I will also talk a little bit about Bing. And then how we can use ChatGPT as a language partner for written or spoken chat. My name is Miriam Zeilinger, and I asked ChatGBT um, to write a short bio for me. And it says Miriam Zeilinger is a trailblazing environmental scientist and activist who has dedicated her career to studying the impact of climate change on ecosystems and promoting sustainable solutions. Born on November 18, 1984 in Munich, blah, 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 blah. After completing her PhD in climate change, University of Cambridge. This, um, I'm very honored <laughs> to be seen such as a trailblazing environmental scientist. This is not true. Um, the only thing that is true in this bio is my name and that I come from Germany, but I don't come from Munich, and also this is not my birthday. So, um, this is what is called AI hallucination. Um, <clears throat> ChatGBT and also other AI applications, they often make things up. So this is something that especially students who uh, want to write their essays with the help of ChatGBT or other applications have to keep in mind that um, not everything this um, application writes is actually true. Um, and often it's made up and it sounds very nice, but it's not true. So I gave uh, ChatGPT a little bit more context, uh, two things, my middle name, Miwai, uh, and that I'm presenting at the Polyglot Gathering. And then I asked again, write a short bio. And then it says, Miriam Miwai Zeilinger is a renowned polyglot linguist and language educator with a passion for bridging cultural divides through the power of language. Born in Tokyo, Japan and raised in a multicultural family, Miriam fluently speaks seven languages, including Japanese, English, German, French, Spanish, Mandarin, and Russian. And this is also not entirely true. It is more true than me being an environmental scientist. Um, but actually, um, what ChatGPT did here, it still doesn't know actually who I am. It just took an educated guess because my name, Miriam Zeilinger sounds very Southern German, but Miwai is a Japanese name, so it assumes I come from a multi multicultural family and I could be born in Japan, but I'm not. And since I'm presenting at the polyglot gathering, so I could be a polyglot, maybe even a famous polyglot, I'm not. Um, I don't think I even could, you could, I don't think you could call me a linguist. Well, I'm a language educator with a passion for bridging cultural divides through the power of language. 
that is true, but I think that's true for all people who love learning languages and connecting with people from other cultures. So I also don't speak those languages fluently, especially not Russian, but I do speak these languages. But this is also an educated guess because Japanese, German from my name and well, English is a very obvious choice. Uh, most people attending this gathering are English speakers. And then also French, Spanish, Mandarin and Russian are very mainstream languages to learn in the language learning community. So it does sound a bit more true. And the thing is, the better the prompt, the higher the probability that the answer could be true. So actually, um, if you want to have good results with ChatGPT or other applications, you cannot rely on, uh, it will have the data, it will know. You will have to feed the correct data that you want it to use. So if I wanted to have a real bio, I should also give ChatGPT more information about where I live or what's my job or what's my age. And then I would get an accurate bio that sounds good. So um, Bing, um, I use uh, Bing, the of Bing um, on Skype. And Bing can access the internet. ChatGPT can't. So um, that's why I um, asked Bing to write a short bio for me and also take a guess uh, what languages I speak. And then Bing says, Miriam Zeilinger is an academic employee at Pädagogische Hochschule Schwäbisch Gmünd. She's an expert in German as a foreign language, adult education, professional language, public relations, intercultural literature, literature didactics, and publishing. Unfortunately, I couldn't find more information about her, but it gives the links um, to my work. And when I asked, yeah, take a guess what languages uh, does Miriam Zeilinger speak? I'm sorry, but I cannot guess that. However, I can tell you that Miriam Zeilinger is an academic staff member at Pädagogische Hochschule Schwäbisch Gmünd. So um, what Bing does, it just stays with the facts, the things that it finds online, and it doesn't make up some great awards or achievements, or even doesn't take a guess what languages I speak. And um, Bing and ChatGPT both run on GBT4. Maybe you have heard like um, the GBT4 was dropped in um, in March. So today's 1st of April. So it was dropped in March and it's much more powerful than the previous GBT3 and GBT3.5. And now there are talks that there will be a GBT5 by the end of the year, maybe. Um, this language model is trained with a mind boggling amount of data and um, it gets more and more accurate. And Bing uses uh, um, yeah, the same architecture like ChatGPT, but it has access to the internet. So this leads to higher accuracy, but it doesn't sound so nice. Yeah, ChatGPT um, writes it in is very wordy, writes in very nice words. Bing is just stays with the facts, at, at least in uh, Skype. So what is um, ChatGBT? Um, so um, I asked ChatGBT, yeah, what are you? And then ChatGBT answered, I am an AI language model called ChatGBT developed by OpenAI based on the GBT4 architecture. I am designed to understand and generate human-like text based on the input I receive. My primary purpose is to assist users in answering questions, providing information, and engaging in conversation. My knowledge is based on the text corpus I was trained on with a knowledge cutoff in September 2021. Um, so currently, the version I use, it's a premium version, it runs on GBT4. And what you see, I circled the thumbs up, thumbs down. Actually, ChatGPT is like a playground. Everyone who's using ChatGPT is also helping to, to test it and to train it. So you can um, give a thumbs up or thumbs down if you like the answer on you didn't. And one of the big problems with ChatGPT is that it is trained on a certain set of data 
And the knowledge is cut off in September 2021. So you can't ask it, who is the current president of the United States? What's the situation in the Ukraine? You can't. ChatGPT doesn't know what's ha happening in the world at the moment or last year. Um, GBT 3.5, default or legacy or GBT 4. And you see that um, GBT 4 is um, more powerful at reasoning and conciseness, much more powerful th than 3.5. Um, but um, the default GBT 3.5 um, is quicker. So, um, yeah, what's the difference between GBT3 and GBT4? It has much more input. It has much more languages. We will look at the languages um, um, in a minute. It's much smarter. It can also actually, GBT4 can also describe pictures, but this um, function is not available to users yet. Um, if, if you give it a link uh, to a picture, it can't describe the picture. If, if you say, okay, describe uh, this picture of an island, it will describe an island because you told it that it's about an island, but it won't describe that island because it can't uh, access it at, at the moment. But I think maybe in the time to come, it will be possible to upload a picture into ChatGPT and it will write a description. It's more accurate and it's faster. And the more languages is interesting because it has also has some not so mainstream languages like Latvian, Thai or Swahili. Um, but it runs best with English and it's trained on a certain set of data. So if you study a really rare indigenous language where there, there are not many written resources on the internet, then ChatGBT will also not be able to help you with this language. So, um, and here, this is the GBT4 accuracy, uh, three shot accuracy on MMLU. I don't even know what this is across languages. And you see there are a lot of uh, languages. And um, in GBT 3.5, the English has 70.1%. And now, uh, now it's at 85.5%. And you see the other languages in GBT4 are more accurate than in G than English in GBT 3.5. And um, I've in, in some groups with um, uh, scientists focused on Japanese studies or Chinese studies, I saw examples that the translation, for example, between English and Japanese or English and Chinese in GBT4 is already quite good. It's uh, much better than um, Google Translate, of course, but also DeepL. The um, translation accuracy is already quite good, but still not really uh, human-like. You would still need a human translator to, to fact check. Yeah, but you see there's a lot of languages available and so it can be very useful for language learning. Uh, for instance, asking it to translate something. So, so GBT uh, or ChatGBT, it's a large language model. What is, what is that? So I asked ChatGBT, a large language model is an advanced artificial intelligence AI system designed to process, understand, and generate human-like text based on a vast amount of data. These models are typically built using deep learning techniques and are trained on a massive scale with millions or even billions of parameters. I think in the case of Chinchilla, another system it was even trillions LM, llms are capable of understanding context generating coherent text and performing a wide range of language related tasks such as translation summarization question answering and more they are trained on diverse data sets including web pages books articles and other text sources which helps them acquire vast knowledge about topics and understand the nuances of human language so the interesting thing is it, um, they are trained on massive input, a massive language input, and they can ana analyze human language and the output also um, looks like human language. 
But um, yeah, people are excited and worried at the same time. So I, yeah, I have some article from last month. So March 16, the unpredictable abilities emerging from large AI models. The problem here now is um, normally when you tell a machine or a computer they're programmed, and they're programmed to do certain things and you know what they will do because you trained them and you programmed them to do those things. But with these new AI models, even the people who train them and program them, they're not sure. Uh, sometimes this, um, uh, this AI models develop um, skills that the programmers didn't intend. So it's sometimes we, we don't know what they, they are capable of. So here's this large language models like ChatGPT are now big enough that they've started to display startling unpredictable behaviors. And this is a bit worrying. So um, this is an article from March 25th. Terminator creator James Cameron says AI has taken over and it's already too late. So this is something that um, yeah people are worried about. Okay, did we start to create the Terminator? Um, others says, okay, it's actually not um, not that we created the Terminator. We would just become uh, stupid. This is an article from um, March twenty-seven. El peligro no es que la EA, okay, sorry, nos destruya, sino que nos vuelva locos y estúpidos says Haron Lanier, um, or Jaron Lanier, I'm sorry. Um, so because we already see this with students that they um, um, use ChatGPT for doing the homework and that they also maybe take the answers um, without, um, you know, ch fact checking them. So. Um, some people are worried that, okay, maybe we just become stupid because we, we don't do anything more, any, anything more ourselves anymore. And this is from March 29th. Um, 1,100 plus notable signatories just signed an open letter asking all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months. So um, Steve Wozniak and also Elon Musk um, and a lot of other people signed it and said, okay, you know, we, there are certain risks. We first have to discuss the rules before we can uh, keep on, um, you know, developing these models. And this is, yeah, from yesterday that uh, ChatGBT is um, banned in Italy because they want to check first check out um, what are the security concerns. And so let's see if other countries follow or if the companies working on such models if they really will make a stop on it i can't imagine it but i'm not an expert so i'm just um uh, i'm just how to say i'm just following the news anyway how can we use these large language models for language learning um so i also asked ChatGPT, and um so for instance it says language translation and we saw it is already quite accurate with languages and it's better than DeepL. So you uh, don't need to switch between um, ChatGPT and DeepL or something. You can do all the translation if you need something translated in ChatGPT. It uh, can explain and correct grammar. So for instance, if you, for instance, I really like to write text in my target languages and before, for instance, currently I'm learning Finnish and then I would write a little text in Finnish and then I would do a reverse translation in DeepL and see, okay, if I translate it back to English or German, does it make sense or is there uh, an error? And now with ChatGPT, I can put the text and say, okay, please do a reverse translation and please correct my mistakes and explain why these mista mistakes are mistakes. So ChatGPT can do that, but you also have to take this with a grain of salt because um, it also makes grammar mistakes. And because once I ask something about a Finnish noun and I ask something about the ending and then uh, ChatGPT was explaining to me, 
oh, okay, you know, because this is a masculine noun. And, and then I was like, no, it, it can't be. There is no grammatical gender in Finnish. It cannot be masculine. And then, ah, yeah, you're right, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, as it is masculine, so, yeah. So even very simple uh, grammar, it can mess it up. But in most cases, it's okay. It can be used for vocabulary expansion. You can ask it, okay, give me a list of household items in Italian or um, I need sentences for, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a Portuguese class now. Um, please give me some sentences I can I can use in the class, like um, how to say XXX in Portuguese or please speak more slowly. And then ChatGPT can make a list with that. And it can also create language exercises. This is actually interesting for language teachers who um, have to teach a lot of classes and prepare the material themselves, because you can ask them, you know, please write a text about like going to the doctor on A2 level and make a vocabulary list with, um, let's say, um, Spanish, uh, German, and uh, create exercises and within some seconds, you have your exercises ready for your class. So it can be very helpful for teachers because they can also check, you know, is the text accurate? Are the exercises good? And they can save a lot of time. I want to have a look, quick look at how to create flashcards. And this looks a bit complicated. I found out it doesn't have to be that complicated. Um, to be honest, actually, I don't use Anki. I have the Anki application on my computer, but I never use it. But then I thought, okay, why not try to um, create an Anki deck with um, ChatGPT? And then I looked online um, how to do that. And then I, I wrote this uh, complicated sentence. Um, I'm not going to read it because there's a much easier way. But I so I, actually, I told ChatGPT exactly what to do and what format to do and what information. And then I copy pasted a Chinese article from Deutsche Welle about large language models like ChatGPT. And I asked it, okay, please only choose words that are on level HSK 5 to 4. You know, this HSK is a Chinese proficiency um, exam. And I copied the text. And there are other applications you can use. For instance, you can take a text from the internet and put it in LinkQ, for example, and extract the words. But I wanted to try out how can I do this with ChatGPT. And on a, a short side note, this is the article from Deutsche Welle. And yeah, you can see, even if you don't uh, know Chinese, um, that, that it has to be has to be some article about ChatGPT and OpenAI and you see Bard. And then um, it made this list that I could um, copy into Anki. But first the problem was it you need a certain UTF format and you know I'm I'm not that tech savvy so I was uh, fumbling around a lot. But before I found a simpler solution. I was looking through the list and I was um, like seeing this word Ernie bot, and I thought, okay, what is this Ernie bot, this uh, strange word? And the Ernie bot is something like ChatGPT, but for the Chinese market, and it's included in Baidu. And Ernie means enhanced representation through knowledge integration. And so if you're um, for instance, if you're living in China and you're studying Chinese, then um, this Ernie bot could be actually be interesting for you for learning Chinese. It's a Chinese product. It's especially powerful for Mandarin. Knows a lot of nuances um, of Chengyu idioms, and um, it also has regional languages. For, for instance, Hakka. I don't know if like how good ChatGPT is with regional or minority languages in China. So Ernie Bot is stronger in this aspect, but it is very limited to what you can ask it to do because it's um, 
things that are not allowed in China, you cannot do with um, Ernie Bot. Anyway, I thought, okay, and somehow I didn't manage to put it in Anki uh, very nicely. Then I thought, okay, maybe I just copy it to Excel and just let it make an Excel list. So this is the Excel list. Um, but then I found out, okay, I can just tell ChatGPT to make an Anki deck. And first I wrote, create Anki decks from the table above and save the results as an importable file. And then ChatGPT said, I'm sorry, but as, a, but as an AI language model, I'm not able to create files directly or save them. However, I can provide you with the Anki deck format text that you can copy and paste into a text editor, save as a text file, and then import into Anki. And then you see this uh, copy code. So it had made the list. I could copy code. And then it also put uh, this that I needed to follow to put it into Anki, and it worked. So a lot of fumbling around, but now I know a very easy way. So you just tell ChatGPT, do it as an do it as Anki Dex, and it does it like this. And it also explains for people like me how to put it into Anki. Okay, and then I thought, okay, um, actually I, I had uh, Chinese as a minor um, uh, at university at that time. It's a long time ago. Uh, we also we had also resources uh, that used Wei Giles, um, not all, only Pinyin, and also okay. I never learned Bopomofo, so uh, but I would be interested in learning it. So I also asked it, okay, make a table with this different transliteration systems. So just out of curiosity. And you could also say, okay, I want translations into Japanese or whatever other language. So whatever list you're interested in, ChatGPT can do this for you. Then um, the second part of what can large language models do, they can help with pronunciation. ChatGPT itself not. This is this is what large language models can do uh, in general, and there are different applications that can help with pronunciation. Uh, not ChatGPT itself, it, because ChatGPT actually at the moment doesn't speak and doesn't listen. There's a way to make it listen and to make it speak, but actually ChatGPT itself doesn't speak and doesn't listen, so it cannot uh, check your pronunciation. Conversation practice, yeah, you can do it with ChatGPT in written and with a trick, also spoken um, uh, language, uh, but it there are also applications that you can use to, based on the GBT4 architecture to do conversation. It can help you understand things. Um, here it can provide explanations and context for idiomatic expressions, slang, cultural refer references. It can create learning material for you. Um, if you think, okay, at my level, there's nothing interesting to read for topics I'm interested in, you can just ask it to, to write a text in the genre you like, about the topic you like, on the language level you like. Um, yeah, it can, um, large language models can help um, with the communication between speakers of different languages, and it can serve as a language tutor because you can ask questions. Um, for instance, yeah, what's the difference with the, between this and that what I have an um, example. So, um, yeah, I tried it out and asked, for instance, I, I really like to listen to music from different countries, different cultures. So I asked ChatGPT to recommend me a couple of African singers and bands that combine traditional instruments and modern music. And they, it should only recommend musicians that sing in indigenous languages. And then it uh, gave me a list of um, five, you, you don't see all, five um, African musicians like Fatumata Diawara, Paseko Kuyate, and Ngoni Ba, and Angelique Kicho. And it explains, you know, where they're from, what kind of music um, they're playing, and, and which language. And this is very interesting, but I still need to Google those artists. So I asked Bing um, to recommend me. I use the same prompt. And 
it also recommended me Angelique Kicho, but also others like Amadou and Mariam and Baba Mal. And I was like, okay, um, let's check out this Baba Mal. And in being in Skype, you have the links and you can actually access the video. So I didn't need to switch tabs or something. And I just chose a video and could listen to the music. So with ChatGPT, I would have to you know, now change tabs, uh, look for the video somewhere else, open YouTube. But in Bing, I can do it directly and listen to the music and think, okay, do I like it or not? Do I add it to my Spotify playlist or not? Then um, I asked ChatGPT, please recommend me Canadian true crime podcasts in French. Um, and it recommended me two Distortion and Les Pires Moments de l'Histoire, and also explained me who hosts them, uh, what, what they are about. Um, sometimes, mostly if you ask questions like this, um, the answers are accurate, but uh, it also happened that it made up podcasts that did not exist because later I look for them online and I don't find them. And then um, ChatGPT apologizes that they don't exist. Um, so I asked Bing and, uh -huh, okay, it also um, recommended me Distension and uh, also some others. And it has these links. And then uh, these are the websites where Bing found the recommendations. And here it's even um, 10 shows and here it's five. So I could read these articles and maybe find even more interesting podcasts for me. And then um, you can ask um, ChatGPT about um, language learning methods. And one of my um, favorite method is laddering. That means that you take one of your target languages where you're already intermediate and use it um, for learning another language. So um, ChatGPT explained it to me. I won't read it to you. You can read it later also in my slides. Um, and then, yeah, it explained it to me and also told me, okay, what are the benefits of lettering, reinforcement, enhanced comprehension, cognitive benefits, improved retention. Then I asked Bing and um, Bing also explained it to me, but shorter, not so wordy as um, uh, ChatGPT, but uh, it didn't talk about the benefits, but some steps I could use, um, um, yeah, how I could use the lettering technique in my language learning plan. Yeah, determine how each language is related to one another, create a roadmap of the languages you wish to learn and in what order, benchmark your priorities and decide when to move on to the next language, practice the language extensively with a native speaker. And it also has a link. And when you go to the link, it shows um, this article how to use the lettering technique. So this is something, if you want to ha have a text that's longer and, and really nicely written, then ChatGBT is better. And I think also maybe for translation, it's better. But if you want to have some information and some new information, and you also want to have links to articles on the internet or to videos or to podcasts, then I think um, Bing is better. I use it in Skype, but if you use um, um, the browser Edge, it's included in Edge. And then, of course, um, you can um, practice different languages. So I use lettering. My, my Spanish is intermediate. I'm learning Finnish. Um, you can say, I actually, normally I write Finesse and not Finlandes, but okay. Puedes explicarme la diferencia entre Vai y Tai en Finlandes? And then, claro, in Finlandes, vai y tai son conjunciones que se usan para expresar opciones o alternativas, pero tienen diferencias sutiles en cuanto a su uso y significado. And then it explains when to use vai or when to use tai. They both mean or, but they have a little bit different meaning. And it gives um, two example sentences. Um, do you want coffee or tea? Uh, we could go to the um, cinema or we could go to eat something. And ex yeah, it explains it to me. And then I thought, okay, I could practice my Finnish 
um, with uh, ChatGPT and asked it to be like a 40 something year old Finnish woman with whom I have a pleasant conversation. And it should use simple and short sentences because my Finnish is super basic. And then uh, ChatGPT started to um, write the dialogues. Um, mine, mina means I and Sina means you. And then I stopped it. And I said, no, I want to talk to you. Don't give me example sentences. Just engage me in Finnish conversation. So we started conversation, but ChatGPT still um, kept on writing Mina, I. And then I also explained it. Don't write Mina at the beginning of sentences. And then what does Onko Sinula Sunnitelmia Vikon Lok Puxi mean in English? And it should explain to me, but uh, then after the explanation, I want to go back to the conversation. Um, okay, then we keep on with our conversation. And we talk about that I'm going to travel and I say I would travel to London. And I also ask uh, ChatGPT if it has been to London and then it explains to me, oh no, you know, um, I can't really physically go to uh, London because I'm just an AI model. And then I told it, okay, please remember, you are acting as a Finnish woman uh, who has a conversation with me, stay in character. And then it went back to character and said, yeah, I've been to London. Okay, and, and this is, um, I know the, um, the time is uh, very short. So I want to um, now switch to the video. And this is Miriam. And in this video, I want to show you how you can speak with ChatGPT. Uh, and in this way, use ChatGPT as an always available language partner. Um, normally, you can only read and write in ChatGPT, but um, when you use the Chrome browser, there's an extension. It's called Talk to Chat GPT. Once you edit the extension, it will show up in as a little box on the right hand side whenever you open Chat GPT. And as soon as you press start, you can actually start speaking with Chat GPT. Okay. Hi, I would like to do language exchange with you. Hello. As an AI language model, I can certainly help you with your language practice. What languages are you interested in practicing? Okay, the important thing is that you really think about what language should ChatGPT understand when listening, that's the speech recognition language, and what language should um, ChatGPT speak. So in this case, it's both um, American English um, but you can switch it up and you can say, okay, I would like to do crosstalk, for instance. Um, and I I continue speaking in English, um, but I want um, ChatGPT to reply in, uh, in another language. So I will switch to Chinese. You see, it's uh, there's a limited number of languages. There's German. English, Spanish, French, Hindi, Indonesian, uh, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Dutch, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Mandarin, and Cantonese. And that's it. Um, so the output language um, limited. Um, okay, but I will switch to Chinese, but I will uh, continue speaking in English. The important thing is that I tell GPT exactly what I want to do. Okay, I would like to do a little bit of crosstalk in English and Chinese. I will speak English and you will speak only in Chinese. Please don't use any English, okay? You will speak only in Chinese, okay? Okay. But I could also switch to Chinese when I say, oh, I don't want to do cross talk. I will um for instance here I can 
switch to Chinese. How now, Shenzhen, we will say Chinese. Um, what is the world's largest city? Okay, I want to stop it right now to take some questions because I gave you the link to the video and um, you can see the rest of the video. The important thing is really that the language output is limited. Um, and okay, it's a bit robotic voice, but um, apart from that, it's quite good. So, okay, I'm taking the questions. A question by Michael. What feature of ChatGPT has been most helpful to you as you practice various target languages? For example, interesting speaking prompts or text correction. Actually, for me, it is really helpful for asking, okay, what's the difference between two different words, like in Chinese, Denshi and Kaishi, what's the difference? And, and also um, finding new resources, because sometimes it can be very specific and sometimes um, I can find resources more easily with ChatGPT than by Googling them. And also, it is also quite good when I look for a word, I heard a word that is I, I don't know how to write it. I, I, um, I'm not sure um, how to write the word. And I can ask you, I can ask, okay, in this language, um, is there a word that sounds like this or that? What does it mean? Or the other day I asked, oh, there's a concept um, like this or that. Is there a word for that? So this is something for things that are a bit complicated to type in into Google. And um, yeah. I think this is very helpful for me. So um, also, yeah, it's interesting to find, I, I can ask it to give me speaking or writing prompts because I take part, for instance, in the 30 day speaking challenge um, by Jonathan Huggins. And uh, if I don't know what to talk about, I could ask it, okay, um, can, can you give me some ideas what to talk about and the vocabulary um, for doing it? So um, that's very helpful. Can you tell, um, a, Question by Neraj. Can you tailor ChatGPT to write or provide material in vi variants of a language, for example, American, English, Honduran, Spanish, Moroccan, French, Swiss, Italian? I haven't tried it, um, but I I guess it can because um, once I ask it to act like um, an annoyed teenager and using, um, so I was chatting with it in German and it should act like an annoyed teenager and using um, teenager slang, German teenager slang, and it did that. So um, as long as there's a lot of like written material available online and JGBT was trained with it, I think it's possible. It definitely, um, I don't know if, Definitely, Ameri it knows the difference between American English and Britain English and Australian English. I, I'm not sure if it knows every dialect, but you try it out if it knows Honduran Spanish. A uh, question by Monica. Do you see any general disadvantage in using ChatGPT? Um, I don't see a real disadvantage. I mean, there are some security concerns. Maybe you should not type into personal information because you don't know, you know, maybe they store the information, they can use it. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm not so sure about like, um, security concerns. Um, but like for language learning, um, the disadvantage is only because it's not really a thinking person. It can give you um, some wrong information. And if you don't fact check by yourself, then maybe you do learn wrong grammar. So it, as a total beginner, maybe you should be a bit careful. I wouldn't use it as, as the only tool for language learning, just as a supplementary tool. But apart from that, it's just using DeepL or using an tooling or something. So, but I, think, I don't think that there's a general disadvantage. 
Another question by Michael, how can this technology especially be helpful for someone studying a not so popular language like Finnish? Yeah, this is um, unfortunately um, in this talk to ChatGPT, the output is not Finnish. Input can be set to Finnish. So I could speak, I could do crosstalk. I could speak in Finnish and let ChatGPT reply in Spanish or something. Um, but um, what's really good, because my, my Finnish is really limited. So I asked it, um, okay, I, now I also use other resources, but I started with Duolingo and I asked it, okay, please write a simple story or a fairy tale in Finnish with just the vocabulary of the Finnish Duolingo course and also the grammatical structure. So very simple. And it did that. And then this is really good because it's really difficult to find really, really easy texts. Even easy Finnish texts ha have a lot of, uh, for me, complex grammatical structures in it. So for Finnish or, yeah, um, languages where you don't have so many resources and you, you struggle to find um, comprehensible material, um, this is really good. And, and then a question by Jonathan, how are you educating your children about AI and their education and what has been their reaction? Um, funnily, my kids learn about ChatGBT by me um, the, um, and, and I showed them how to use it. They're not really using it, um, but um, yeah, I'm educating them about the advantages and disadvantages. I tell them that it's not always true uh, what ChatGPT writes, even if you use it for your math homework. You sometimes you tried it out and sometimes ChatGPT uh, has the wrong answers. And But I think it's important to educate children on this because the technology is there and it will develop very, very quickly in, in the next weeks, months, and years to come. And the children have to learn to live in a world where a lot of things are done by AI and a lot of jobs will disappear because of AI, but other new jobs, like the newest job right now is prompt engineer, um, will also come up. So um, you cannot you know, hide this technology from them because they have to learn to use it. And also, for instance, a university, uh, not my university, but a university um, here in our region is actually also developing um, their own chatbot um, that is supposed to help students at this university. And this chatbot has the information of the teaching material of the actual teachers and professors at the university. So the information there is reliable and students can use this chatbot to help them um, you know, prepare for the exams. And I think a lot of teachers will now um, include um, applications like ChatGPT in their classes and educate the children how to use those tools um, uh, in a beneficial way so they can be kind of language, also learning assistants, not only language learning, but learning assistants. Okay, um, thank you. Um, so the conclusion is that actually large language models like ChatGPT offer great potential as supplementary language learning tools. There are many, um, I mean, we're all waiting for BART by Google to go public or currently only a limited group of people can use it. Maybe later this year Sparrow will go public. So ChatGPT is just the one you heard most of, but it's not the only um, and, and so with a comparison between ChatGPT and Bing, it can be beneficial to see, um, you know, if you get different results with different systems. There are safe, still many limitations, yeah, a lot of AI hallucinations and safety concerns, but I do think they will develop dramatically in the near future. And they will also become more and more useful for language learning. And maybe in five years, we cannot imagine how we could learn languages without them. Right now, it's also so normal to have a smartphone and use a lot of language learning application apps that we didn't have 20 years ago. So maybe it will just become very normal for us. And yeah, 
thank you very much for listening to my talk. And if you are looking for me, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is Miriam's Lingotopia. And yeah, there I just post some things about my language learning, some interesting pictures. Thank you very much and goodbye.